What's up, indie game fans? Today, we're playing Scourgebringer. Scourgebringer is a roguelite, and in my opinion, it's in the pinnacle three of roguelites, which are Scourgebringer, Flinthook, and Monolith. I'm not saying they're the best roguelites, but they each share such a similar, distinct style where they're very arcade, but the replayability is so high due to how di diverse they make each run. And because they all kind of share the same setup, I, I kind of group them together, but they're so perfect. And if you want a true roguelite experience, pick up any three. But if you want a fast paced, brutal hack and slash adventure, pick up this one. Scourgebringer's where it's at. And if in case you're one of those people who plays roguelites and gets mad at the difficulty, it has oodles of accessibility options. Like, just a slew of them to make sure you can have the game you want. But, enough talking, let's get to it. Alright, so here we are in kind of like most roguelites, a central hub. You have this man explaining the story to you. You're back. This is Garo. You're back, cough. <clears throat> See, the computer is working. Ready to read logs. Go ahead, give it a try. <clears throat> yeah, he's very talkative. So, the other thing is is like most roguelites you have a skill tree that you can build up every skill in this tree is useful and i only have 44 percent done but they all do something they all do something useful like smashing back bullets it's phenomenal but enough of this let's get into the gameplay here we are in the first shrine and like most roguelites just to give you a backstory on the game, it doesn't really have one. A monolith appeared in the sky on this world. And it's basically said, you're going to have to get rid of me to make life go back to normal. So they have millions of people going into this gigantic monolithic structure to try to challenge and collect the riches from within. But if you die, you get sent back to the beginning and nobody's ever beaten it. So everyone thinks you're just going insane. So it's our job to go through this alien monolith, destroy the beasts that live within it, and hopefully save the world while collecting some, you know, oodles and treasures along the way. But let's get to this amazing gameplay. So, you got double jump, hack and slash, you can kind of fly with your sword swings, you gotta smash attack, which can actually parry and immobilize enemies. You have a dash attack, which is phenomenal, so you can kind of get really going on this. You also, a feature which is interesting, is you have a gun. The gun reloads, you can different get different types of guns. But let's get to it. little pickups every now and then as you can see the gameplay is very fast the metal music comes bumping in every fight this is kind of what you just saw in this first room it's kind of what the whole game is and it's kind of what monolith is and it's kind of what flint hook is fast paced clear the room type games but and if you like that style i gotta tell you like i'm serious these are the top of the top Nice. Reloaded, ready to go.
And in roguelite fashion, there's always shops. Now, the currency in this game is blood. So, the more blood you collect, the better the items you can buy. So, I can buy rocket launcher at this moment. Constructs take 200% sword damage for 2.5 seconds. Bullets have a chance to ignore enemies' armor. So, we get some piercing. And what it means by constructs is monolith, flint hook, and, well, this one, Scorch Bringer, all have something in common, which is they have usual multiple types of enemy subsets. So there could be three groups of enemies, each having like 10 units in it. And they each have their identifier, and usually they have modifiers to weapons or gadgets in each game that give extra damage to these items or creatures or enemies. It's a pretty sweet little subset that makes each run different, especially on the luck you have and what you find. But I don't want to buy anything right now. And here we are at the boss, and unfortunately, each stage has a mini-boss, sometimes two. You have to beat the mini-boss first to get the big bob over here. Fast travel. I don't think so, Scooter. Oh, they broke my score! So, if you look in the bottom right, I have a combo meter going on. And if you get hit, that bad boy breaks. Good news is, it was high enough that uh, I'm still killing it. You son of a bitch. Oh! And just like that, it's all over all my combo gone here's the boss though middle mini boss you know what i don't need a combo anymore i'm just gonna fuck you up all right okay fuck this I just lost all of my health, like a dick. All right. Well, started from ground zero. Let's get back to the top. So, also in SLU, you get relics. So, Scourgebringer, Monolith, and Flintuck all do their relics in the way of each stage. You get to choose between one of three to buff your hero for the rest of the run, and you collect one on each stage. I like this pattern because it makes it worthwhile to find this room and be excited to find it because it's always good. So like increases maximum HP by 33%, 0.5% of vulnerability after successfully deflecting bullets with a smash, enemies have 25% less life. Why would you not want that? It's so good. Yes, make them weaker. I just got a bunch of stuff. All right. All challenge room. I'm about to get paid. So by the way, this is one of those things where you've seen shops, you've kind of seen regular roguelite things. One thing that the trio I'm talking about are good about is randomization throughout the runs. This challenge room does not always appear at all. Just like there's many characters that don't appear every run, that are there just for that one run. So it feels like another day in the life of whatever life they're living, which I can't believe I dodge all of that. And so this challenge room is just a little extra to enjoy. I don't think so. I already got my two bag. That's what I'm talking about. Daddy's getting paid. All right, we're actually uh, about ready to get out of here. Go to the boss. Yeah, that's it. Do you have anything you want to buy? I would love to get back some HP. 
I would love to get some more damage. Now, do I want a double revolver? Or do I want to be a G and just get a rocket launcher and kill him? Oh, but piercing, though. I'm going to get piercing. Ah, I can't get it. Alright, so I got to get that weapon, actually. So, you can only buy weapons. Your sword is always the same, right? So, you have to buy new weapons, which, right now, I have this, you know, little pistol here. And you can get it for one, so I'm going to get this double revolver. Look at that. Oh, look at that, with bouncing. Now, with the bouncing, we go back to this man. And I want that piercing! That's what I'm talking about, bouncing, piercing. That's a dream come true. Now, what we do is we pretend we're tough, and we go say we're going to kill this boss. But we all know that's probably not true. Not with body boulder. Hey! By the way, I do not play this game right with bosses. It's such a greedy game that you just want to keep whomping. And he's going to kill me. Oh, he's going to kill me. There it is. That's all she wrote. Well, gotta tell you, that wasn't the worst. Alright, so now let's show you the next part, which is... I have collected hunting orbs. If you look in the bottom right of the screen, you'll see that little orange dot that looks like a dragon ball, and I have a one next to it. You collect those by defeating many bosses, regular bosses, and... If you hold a certain amount of blood after a round ends, like 1300 to be exact, and you can stack that... You get another Hunter Orb per 1300. I sucked that run, so I have a measly one, which means look how broke I am. I can afford nothing. Well, now that I've shown you what it is, I'm going to go through one more run, and I'm going to talk as little as possible outside of minor frustrations, so you can really take in the vibe of the game. Let's do it.
This is a mystery in the game, which you must encounter later on. I have not reached that yet. I tried. I failed. I'm sorry. Well, I did not earn enough to get an upgrade. I have failed you. But I do hope this gave you a good idea about what this game is truly about. And seriously, if you're considering a new roguelite and you like the way this one feels, pick it up for sure. So, that's my let's play of Scourgebringer, as for how it rates as a roguelite. I gotta tell you, I, it's a 10 for me. There's just nothing wrong with it for me personally. I can see why other people would not enjoy it. But, damn it, I love the little aesthetic, the story of what they're trying to do. The gameplay is so tight and fast that if it's your thing, it's going to fit. And seriously, check out the trifecta I'm talking about here. Scourgebringer, Flinthook, and Monolith. All of them are fucking phenomenal. Now, I can tell you the differences in them. Flinthook has more of a one-piece pirate feel, where it's more about the adventure and just enjoying the very fun gameplay. Scourgebringer is about the difficulty. That's it. It's the difficulty and working through the fucking fast gameplay. Monolith is a phenomenal one, but it's about the diversity it brings to the table. So many upgrades, so many things to discover. Monolith has the most depth, and it's just phenomenal. I'm going to do a video on that one. Don't worry. But definitely pick up Scourgebringer if you're into roguelites and this seems like fun. 10 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. See you in the next one.